Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. So it's my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to do the Rising Tides bag and I've already done the main base of it and I'm going to show you how to get this done using a smaller sample because it's a repeat pattern. It's in multiples of five. Once we get that done then I'm going to bring you back to this pattern and we're going to continue then on the top. We're going to then flip it upside down like so and then finish off the bottom and then we're going to do the handles. It's a pretty simple bag and uh, the texture of this is really quite incredible and using the Karen Cotton Cakes it's a winner each and every time. So without further ado let me take you to the diagram that we have for you to make your life a little bit easier and tell you some of the secrets. Before I take you to the diagram I want to point out one thing. Do you notice how the chevrons are going straight up? Now if you do a continuous revolution going round and around what happens is that the chevrons will then go up on an angle. So in order to get it to be completely vertical like you see every other round you have to turn. So you're even though you're going to go in a continuous round just like you see you have to turn when you get to the end and go back in the other direction and then turn and go back in the other direction. So you have to keep going back and forth in order for these to line up perfectly. So now let me take you to the diagram and explain that a little bit more. So here's the diagram that Diva Dan made us today and we are gonna go up in a continuous uh, circle like so but what I have to notice here is that you see these slip stitches here. It means that we're going to be going in the opposite direction. So we're going to then continue around, uh, starting our chains and then we're going to join and then continue to go and we are going to uh, go along like this and we're going in the wrong side direction. So when we do this, this will be the wrong side. When we go to uh, round number two, what's gonna happen is that when we slip stitch, we're gonna go in this direction instead. And this is going to be the foundation of where these chevrons come into in the future in round number four. So what I have here is that when it's an odd number, one, three, five, seven, etc., we're always going to be going in the wrong direction when we get up to the, um, uh, before we get to the band of the bag and then in the other direction when we go to start doing the repeat pattern which is rows number three and four we're always just gonna go back and forth just like you see. So we need to pay attention to that. Um, I have this in the diagram. You can go to the more information of this video if you'd like to print this out. Very simplistic idea. So it's in multiples of five if you'd like to change the size of this bag. We're gonna be using a four millimeter size G crochet hook in order to play. Let me show you a small sample of this and let's go going. So as we begin today we're going to start off with a slip knot. You're going to chain 120 if you'd like to match exactly what my bag is. If you'd like to change the size it's in multiples of five so as long as the final number is divisible by equally by five then you're good to go. So I'm just gonna show a small sample. So you just go one, two, three, four, and five. There is classified as one chevron. And then six, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 2 chevrons that you see. So go either 120 or just go as big as you want to go and then I'll meet you back here in just a moment. So I'm just doing a smaller sample for you here on camera. So what I have a total of 25 on here but you'll have 120 if not more or, or if not less than that. So what I want you to do is take it off the loop and just insert your hook through the beginning one. Make sure the chain is not twisted in any way so just kind of follow the chain. Make sure it's good to go and then put on that loop again and then just part yarn over and through. And so because you've already did a join here that's almost classified as a chain one. So now you can move on. So we're going to start exactly in the same chain that you did the attaching with. So just single crochet into the back hump of the chain. It's just one strand and you wanna do that so that you get a nice edge on the base of it so that you can finish this off later. And you're going to single crochet. So just moving down the chain, just go in the back hump only. Once you do the first one, it stays turned over and you'll be able, uh, you can access it pretty, pretty uh, equally, <laughs> easily, sorry about that. So continue all the way around, single crochet in the back hump of the chain all the way around. So I come all the way around, I'm on the last chain before I join it to the first single crochet. So I'm just gonna join. So remember what I said about turning. So once you join it, I want you to turn it around and you're gonna go in the direction that you just came from. So this is gonna be the setup direction. This is the right side of the project now we're looking at. So we're going to start off and you're going to chain one. Okay and right in the same one below you're going to do a single crochet one and then do the next one single crochet and then we're going to create the foundation of where the chevron will eventually sit. So you're going to chain one, skip the next one and then you're going to do single crochets in the next four after that. So let's count those out. So we have one, two, three, and four. And once you get the four in there, just chain up one, skip one, 
and then single crochet in the next four and you're gonna do that all the way around and I'll see you at the end of this round. So as I come back around I'm just continuing to do my um, my four in a row and then skip one single and then single crochet then starting in the one after that. So chain one, skip one. So at the very end of this you're going to single crochet in the final two stitches that are left on there. If you are incorrect with your uh, stitch count numbers so you can see I'm off by one. So I wanna show you this because chances are this will happen to you too. So I'm off by one, I have an extra one. So what I would do if I were you at this point is, is knowing when to fake it. So I would put these two together. So just pull through and through and then pull through two and two stitches just became one and then join it to the top of the first single crochet. I know that's completely cheating but look, do you see it? No. So what I want you to do now is turn your work again and now we're going to move up to round number three which is the repeat then uh, uh, rows three and four. So this is the start of the repeat. So let's begin row number three. So all the odd numbers will be all identical to each other. So we're gonna chain up one and we're gonna do one single crochet in each of the stitches and that includes the chain one space. Now the chain one space is not always easy to identify when you go to do that. So you just wanna make sure that you're kinda of pulling it up and seeing it. Okay, so we chain one space, go right into the space itself and then you're going to continue. So there's four in a row, if you remember, of single crochets. So you can either count it one, two, three and four and the next one must be a chain one space which is there right there. So I want you to do that all the way around. So single crochet in every single crochet and chain one space. So as you come back around you're just gonna finish it off as normal. There should be two single crochets left. Now if you remember I kind of fudged it last time to get my count to be right. So there's only two left and then you're just going to join it to the first single crochet then. And when I say two left it's two left after the uh, chain one space. You're going to turn your work and now let's go for round number four. Sometimes what I have been doing is just flip this inside out. If it's easier for you to access it doesn't really matter. It's just whatever is easiest for you. So this here is considered the good side. So this is an even number that we're about to start. So what we have is that you'll notice that there was no chain to start a stitch. So what I need you to do is that we're going to treble and so you're gonna wrap the hook twice and look for the stitch that is just in this chain one space. It's right here. It's two rows below and you're just gonna go access the stitch, the single crochet and pull through, pull through two, two and two just like this. So what's happening here is that that, that is counting the one stitch. So what you can just do is that you see this gapping space is that that's kind of like your anchor of where you need to jump over. So you're just gonna come to the next one. So the first stitch out here is classified as this treble. So the second one is the one that you want to start your single crochet in. You wanna chain one, skip one and single crochet in the next one and now you've just created the gapping space for when the next treble is gonna sit right here. So now we have to treble into the same one we just did. So wrap the hook and treble in to the same one and pull through, pull through two, two and two. Do you see that? So here on the back end you're going to notice that this was the one that we just did the treble. The next one is the next treble. So we wanna skip those two eventually as we do it. So immediately out, out of this treble we just treble again and go to the next chain one space right here. And just it's in the chain one space. It's the stitch right below it and you're going to reach over and treble into that one. So now where is your next single crochet? You're gonna count two empties. So one, two and go to the third for your single crochet. Chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next. And that creates your next gapping space that you're gonna have next time. And then treble into the same one you just were in. And there is another chevron complete. So once you finish the chevron, wrap twice and jump to the next one. Okay, now where is the next single crochet? Turn it over. You got one, two will be empty and you're gonna go to the third. So single crochet, chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next. These gapping spaces that you have should be lining up on top of each other. And then treble into the same one you just did. 
I want you to go all the way around using the same technique and this is round number four which you'll repeat this every other round. So once you get a treble done, wrap twice and look for the next space and go for the single crochet that's right, right in it. Okay, turn it, skip two and single crochet in the next, chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next and then treble into the same one. Just like that. So I'm almost done here. So I'm just gonna treble, go into the next one. It's a very easy pattern to remember. Okay, so where's the next single crochet? So skipping two, go into the third, chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next. And you have one stitch left here which is the final treble. So going in the same one. And when you go to join it, you need to join it to the beginning treble. So with the slip stitch. And that almost makes that invisible. So what you have seeing now is the trebles that you have. So to start row number three again, turn your work and chain up one. And you're just going to start now, I always look back on the other way. So right where I'm sitting right now is the first stitch. So you go into that one. Okay, and then you just keep moving yourself across. What you need to watch for is the chain one spaces that are right in directly. So what I'd like to do is turn it over and say yes this is in the middle of the chevron. This is in fact the chain one space and just single crochet into that space. There's four in a row if you remember. So one, two, three and four. And so this technically I can see it that it is a chain one space but if I'm not sure turn it over and yes that is the chain one space and go right into that space. So please do that all the way again. This is a repeat of row number three or round number three. So I'm coming all the way back around and I'm looking. The next one is the chain one space and what I have is two stitches left. And how can I tell that? There's a chain one space and remember that there's two single crochets that are after that in order to keep your multiples of five. So you're just going to join it then to the first single crochet nice and tight, turn your work and now begin row number four all over again. So it's really easy once you get this first one established on where you need to go. Remember that you do not chain one first. So immediately just treble and jump to the chain one space and jump to the single crochet right below it. And you're going to treble there and then to get yourself established you can see where you need to skip over stitches. So just looking, this is the first stitch here. This must be the second one, sorry, it's the second one over. Okay, that's your single crochet. Chain one and single crochet in the next one after that. So skip one, that keeps that line going up. You're going to treble. So the trick is really to get started on the row to keep your stitch counts equal. So once you're out of a treble, you immediately start trebling into the next one. So you're just gonna reach over and start the next chevron. Okay, so back here you're going to skip two empty stitches, go to the third. That's your single crochet, chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next which keeps your chain spaces equal on top and then treble into the same one. So what I want you to do is that I want you to continue to repeat rounds three and four. This is number four until you get a total of 18 inches tall on this. Your uh, uh, bag if you've done the 120 should be about 14 inches uh, wide when you're laying it flat. So what I want you to do is continue all the way around uh, and then continue to build up. So rounds three and four and get your uh, 10 inches uh, complete and then what I want you to do is that I want you to finish on round number four. Do not fasten off and when you finish that round do not turn your work. Just keep it equal and what, what, I'm, what I'm gonna do then is gonna bring you back to that project uh, that I showed you in the beginning and we're gonna finish that live here on camera. So this is how easy it is and the colors will change on its own and it's really quite amazing. So let's continue then 
back to the regular bag. So here we are. I've got my 10 inches tall and I finished on round number four. Usually we would turn our work and go back in the other direction but in this case I want you to continue to stay on this side now. We're gonna finish off then on the good side which is the side that you can see with all the chevrons because you see the chevrons are missing on the inside of the project. So what I want you to do for round number one, this is the top band, is that I want you then to chain one and just single crochet into each one of the stitches going all the way around. So if there's a chain one space, fill that in. So there's the chain one space, fill that in and then just continue if you wanna count out. It's one, two, three, four and fill in the space and one, two, three, four and fill in the space if you want to keep it equal and just making sure you pay attention or just look for the center of the chevron and it's easy to find. So just single crochet yourself all the way around. So I'm just coming up all the way back around and I'm just doing my last single crochet and then I'm just going to join it to the first single crochet that I started with. So for the next three rounds just quite simple chain up one and one single crochet in every stitch going around and then join it with a slip stitch and do that a total of three more times. So rounds number two, three and four and then what I want you to do is fasten off and uh, we're gonna finish this section and then we're gonna turn the bag upside down and then finish the base of the bag and then show you how to do the straps. So let's continue to do this now and let me get this done off camera. I'll see you here in just a moment. So I'm coming around and just so you're aware my band is a complete solid color. That's a fluke. So that's not something that I planned but I'm just about to run out of that color now. So what I want to do is that I wanna save the remaining of this strand here so that I can sew in four of these uh, strap handles. So uh, there's gonna be two but there's one and two and three and four. And so what I want to do is save enough of this so that I can use four strands in order to sew the straps into place. Once you're uh, all the way around you're just going to pull through and then use this strand here and put it onto a tapestry needle. So whenever it, uh, you wanna hide anything really good and you don't want things to fall out on you especially in a bag because you're gonna be using it is that you want to just drag it through the back part of the stitches. So don't let that sink out to the front side. And because it's the same color it's gonna look awesome. So just go once and then I'm just gonna turn it over to see it easier and go through a different path second time and then third time is a charm so go back in the other direction one more time. And then you can just safely cut that down into the project and then you don't have to worry about that. So any loose ends that you may have in this project that's the best way to get rid of them and therefore they're completely missing. So now what we want to do is that we want to start off at the base of the bag now. So we have our top done and we're gonna turn it over now and probably starting right at the, you can see where it starts here. See it's a little bit of imperfection so that's a good indication of where you're going to start and that's where I want you to start then for the second part as we begin the base of the bag and there's gonna be two revolutions and then we're gonna sew the base of the bag together. So grabbing my yarn I just happen to be having the same color. Again it's just a complete fluke and you're going to start exactly where you started here below. So remember this has been, we started and we went up this way but now it's upside down. So because I had you go in the back loop you're gonna have perfect stitches all the way around to be able to follow and you're just going to join it with a slip stitch, chain one and then placing that straggler on top of it you're just going to single crochet right around and each stitch and go right up over top of the straggler so that you can trap that into position. So one single crochet in every stitch going all the way around for round number one and then round number two we're going to then do a decrease and then the third step is to sew together the base. So please do this single crochet all the way around. So I'm coming around the first revolution of the base of the bag and we're going to go for round number two which is the final round of the base and then we're gonna move to the straps. So what we need to do at this point and when we get all the way around we're just going to slip stitch to the beginning single crochet that we started with. I used to not crochet like in the back hump of the chain and then I realized how the advantages of it to having a, an edge that looks perfect every time. So we're just gonna slip stitch to the beginning single crochet. So now we're gonna do a decrease that is going to cause it to kind of bell into each other like a bowl shape and what we're going to do is we're gonna chain up one and we're going to single crochet in the first two. So one and two and then the next two we're gonna put them together. So just going in, pull through, go to the next one, pull through and then pull through all three loops. So going the next two by themselves and then the next two are together. So in, through, 
go to the next one through you got three loops pull through all three and you're gonna do that all the way around for this round. So two by themselves and then two together just like that. So two and then two together. Please do that all the way around for the final round of the border of, of sorry of the base of the bag. So when you get all the way back around I want you to slip stitch to the top of the first single crochet and pull everything nice and tight and what we're going to do is cut a long enough strand here so that you can use it as a sewing strand to uh, solidify the bottom of the bag or to make it solid. So I just pull through everything all of that whole strand and I want you to flip this inside out now. So just flip it inside out grabbing that strand take it with you and now we're looking at the inside of the bag. So what I want you to do is pay attention to the seam line to where it is. You might be able to see it on the back end here. If not just flip it over and you can see it here. So make that the very edge here because what's happened is that you had to go back and forth back and forth and so if you have it right on the edge you'll have like a solid line here and that it'll color up better as well. So once we've got that done we're gonna sew the bottom together. So now we're ready to go. So your strand should be right on the edge pretty much where you uh, were doing the joining. So everything is nice and sitting flat. So now that we have this we want to sew the base of this bag together. So we're just gonna go into the st stitch that it comes out of and go directly across into the other stitch and this is called the whip stitch. You're just gonna go right up over top, pull it nice and tight and then advance to the next stitch on the one side, advance to the next stitch on the other and all you're just going to do is whip stitch your way across the base of the bag putting both sides together like that. So please do that all the way across. I'll see you at the end of this and I'll show you how to hide in your yarn strands and then we're gonna then continue then with the straps after that. Okay once you get to the end I've gone all the way so what I'm just gonna do is just feed it in a little bit of fibers here. I'm just gonna tie it so it catches into a little knot. It's kinda like your added security to it. Then what I'm going to do is just feed it in and out three times. Remember this is the inside of it. So you wanna keep the the needle to the inside of the project. No, don't go all the way through it to the other side because then you'll see it. So stick to the fibers on the wrong side of the project which is the side we're looking at now. And go back and forth three times which is a charm. So they say three times is a charm. So continue that way and then we're done. So we're going to flip this back the right way and then we're gonna continue on with the straps. You gotta make a total of two of them so let's flip this up now. We've now defined where the bag sits flat at the base. See, see how nice the whip stitching looks once you're done. And it's good to go. So what I want to do then at this point is that I want to start the straps and let me just shape this better and look at that. Isn't that so cool? There we go. We're good to go. So let's uh, get started on the straps next. So the straps are really quite easy to do. There's a total of five rows back and forth and then the sixth row you attach the first and the last row together to create a round, rounded kind of shape which gives you a nice sturdy handle. So you need to make a total of two of these. Let the yarn change the color as it wants because then that kind of matches the bag even more. So let's grab a yarn, same size hook, a four millimeter size G crochet hook and let's get playing. So let's begin to work on a handle. We're gonna create a slip knot and I need you to chain a total of 100. So both of them are exactly identical. So I'm just going to do a smaller sample. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10 and you're gonna go all the way to 100 for me and then meet me back here. So put me on pause, get your 100 done and then I'll stay here. For those that are ready continue second chain from the hook. So 1 and 2 and you're going to go into the back hump of the chain only and you're going to just do a single crochet all the way down the chain. By staying on the back hump you create a nice edge that is easier to crochet into when you go to fold these over to create the rounded shape. Now as I mentioned in the intro of this part there's a total of five rows. So this is classified as one of the rows that you're doing right now. So how many more left do you have to do? 
you have to do a total of five. So I find once you count it out and just go back and forth it's easy to sit in front of the TV and go. So just turn your work, chain one and starting in the first one you're just gonna single crochet all the way back across. And you're gonna do a total of that so that you end up having five rows. So we're now on row number two. So what I want you to do is that I want you to get all your five rows done and then I'm going to show you how to do um, the sixth one by just doing the quick roll of the, the project and then securing it like that. So once you're at the end, turn again, chain one, single crochet in each. So get your five rows done. I'll see you back here in just a moment. Now once you get your five rows done, obviously this will be a lot longer. Once you get your fifth done, you're just going to turn it and then just come into the first one. So notice I did not chain one first and then fold it up and get the first stitch on this, the other side. And you might wanna put that straggler on the inside of it and it gets stuck. So pull through and then finish it. It's a single crochet. So advance the next stitch, go to the other side, that stitch. So you're advancing together and you're single crocheting. Once you get a few established, you can just fold it in half and just work your way across doing a single crochet. Just like that. So I want you to get these handles done. It's a total of two of them and they're really quite easy to do. I made sure the handles aren't that complicated so that you can whip these off in front of the TV without any problem for my, uh, for me it's just quite easy. Just turn on the TV and, and just hook away. So get your handles done and when we come back then I'll show you how to apply them to your bag. The next thing I want you to do is grabbing another piece of yarn that's a different color other than the band. I want you to cut four pieces of that yarn and these are your stitch markers. Unless you have stitch markers that's a cheaper way to go. <laughs> you never run out of yarn as a yarn artist. What I want you to do now is that we're going to locate, make sure that the bag is flat here so that we can securely put the handles on. I want you to get and I, it's about three and a half inches from here to here for me and that's where I'm going to put in my first stitch marker. If you want to be more secure about it what I can just do is put another something else that I know is about that and right where it's pointing is where I'm going to apply the first stitch marker here. So I'm just kind of measuring it out. You can use a tape measure but I don't have one here at the table today. Um, I'm too lazy to get up and get it. So once I have my first one in I'm going to then just move this to the other side and I can just double check too. My hands are the same and I'm going to apply it right there. So this is the first side of the bag. So the handle will come up and then back down in. So what I want to do is just fold up the bag. So both sides and exactly where the other stitch is in the back. See how it matches up? I wanna put the other stitch marker there and then that'll indicate to me where I need to go for that back side. And then fold this up. So these are going to be the center markers of where the strands are going. So the other thing you want to pay attention, see how this is gray? I want to use the same color that is in the ball on the ball in order to come through. I'm going to come right through the project and if you use the same color it's pretty much invisible and that's a good way to go. So I have my bags uh, straps. So what I want to do is that I want to fold it up and I wanna work on this one first. It's easier to work from the inside of the bag outward than it is to go from the out in. So I'm gonna just fold it up and what I'm going to do then is I'm going to attach these straps. So I want to come right down right into that single crochet area just like you see and I'm going to follow that up here so that it doesn't have any, any twist to it. Just like you see and what I want to do is go right down to the other side. So when you're putting it down it should look pretty awesome. So what? It, let me uh, get my yarn started on a tapestry needle Show me and show you how to attach those. To attaching is really simple so I wanna just eye this up and just lay this down. It should be almost in the center and I want to start at the base of the strap here and I wanna come from the this side go right out to the other side. It's the same color yarn so it's gonna be pretty much hidden. The other side I put a slip knot on there just like you see. So I'm gonna pull it until I get to the slip knot and then I'm gonna rest it and then coming back in from the other side and I wanna put that needle through that slip knot. And what that will do is it'll lock it in a position. So when I pull this tight, see, it locks. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go in and out all the way up until I hit to the top of this brim. Don't go right over top of the brim and then go across, down, 
back across and then just tap it, uh, tack it in the middle. So just moving up in the, in the strap and then back through the other side. And I'm just gonna keep doing that until this strap is complete. So let me do that off camera here and I will see you back here in just a moment. Once that you think that you've tacked it enough, I just want you to come on the inside and just create a little knot. So just coming through and just kind of feed it through and it'll kind of lock onto each other. And then if you go back and forth in and out three times, it should lock permanently. If you want to secure it with more of a, of a, of more of a tie, that's completely up to you. It's your creativity. It's, you know exactly what you're going to do with your bag. Just make sure that when you do put it through your fibers, you are putting it through um, completely different fibers each pass because you'll pull it directly out if it's not. So what I want to do then is that I want to then just cut that right down into the project because I've gone back and forth three times and you're going to need to do this three more times of course. You're going to have your your other straps to work with. So I would work on the same side. So just continue up. Let me just back you out a little bit here and so you can just follow it up and then attach it to the other one here on the inside and then when you're ready flip this whole thing upside down and pull this back and then do the other two just like you see. So when I come back we'll have this completely done for you. So here it is the Rising Tides uh, bag. I have my straps into place. I provided extra long handles so that you can put it over your shoulder if you wish to carry your yarn projects or anything that you wanna carry inside your bag. You can pull it apart and you can see everything has been attached and everything is good to go. So this is a new pattern. Please enjoy. You can download everything that you need to know here on the more information of this video. Until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Bye bye.